Hello, everybody. It's Roger Royce, partner with Haynes Boone Palo Alto Emerging Growth and Venture Capital, and also host of the 10,000 Startups podcast. And today, I want to say just a few words at a high level about safes, because some of you who are new to startups probably don't know as much about safes as you might want to. So a SAFE is a simple agreement for future equity. It is really the preferred way, at least on the West Coast and I believe the East Coast, that startups raise their initial money. And the SAFE is a, essentially, it's a way for somebody to put money in, an investor to invest now, but value that investment later. Because typically early stage startups are very hard to value. You don't have revenue, you don't have EBITDA, you don't have, you might not even have year over year revenues. So hard to find any metrics. Uh, so let's put the money in now and then value it later. And that's a concept that's been around for a very long time. And before the safe was, I guess, invented, we had convertible notes. So the investor would basically loan money to a company and that loan would then convert into equity at a discount to the preferred stock price when a company finally did get around to selling stock to a professional investor like a VC, it would be preferred stock and there'd be a professional valuing the company. So that took a lot of the risk out because the company was worried that they were going to sell too cheap and the investor was worried that they're going to buy too high. So this conversion feature helped. The notes were a problem because they had to typically had to bear interest. If they didn't, the IRS could impute a portion of the of the proceeds as interest. And they typically had to be short term for regulatory reasons, at least here in California. And they almost always went into default. And I've seen it happen where, you know, they go into default. Well, technically, that means your lender could sue and get a judgment and then levy on assets and end up with your company. So the safe is like a convertible note with no interest and no fixed repayment date. In other words, it gets repaid when the company gets sold, when it liquidates, or when it does a financing. And if none of those events happen, the safe just sits out there for years and years and years maybe. Now, um, let me tell you the essential things you need to know about a safe because I know how easy it is to go online and just download a form because it's <laughs> and just use that form thinking that what you've got is standard. Well, I can tell you these are not standardized. Oh, yes, there are standard forms floating around, but there are lots of variations and lots of things that could change. And whatever you're downloading off the Internet uh chances are it's going to be a very investor-friendly form rather than a company-friendly form. So we should go through what that means. So the first thing, and the biggest thing, is you need to know if you're dealing with a pre-money safe or a post-money safe. Now, what does that mean? Uh, at a high level, just essentially think of pre-money as being company-friendly or founder friendly, think of post money as being investor friendly. In other words, a pre-money safe, if additional money comes in on additional safes, all of the safes are going to dilute. It's as if the safe investor had equity on the day they put their money in. They dilute by all the new money that comes in. In a post money safe, if you raise additional safe money, the post money safe holder does not dilute. They're gonna get the same percentage of stock no matter how much money you raise in that safe round. Well, somebody has to dilute, that's just math, right? It can't go over 100%. That means the founders are going to dilute for every safe that they sell, but not the earlier safe holders. So if you sit down and do the math, you can see how that comes out. And by the way, the modern day online cap tables have tools that will allow you to do what ifs. So you don't have to guess as much, you have to set some what ifs but you can at least run the, run the numbers and see where you end up. So that is the number one most important thing. And But it's not the end of the story. A company might do a post-money safe if you expect that to be your only safe, or if you're very close to doing a funding round, you might live with that, or you might be forced to because that's all your investor will accept, uh, or there might be other reasons, but just know what you're getting into because the biggest danger with a safe is that founders will use them to just keep raising money over and over again and again and go on and on for years. I've seen companies go on for years doing it this way. No real idea how much they've given away because they won't know until they convert all the safes. 
And then we get an equity co investor come in and we have to do a pro forma cap table. And that's the first time they realize they've given so much of their company away uh, that there's not enough left over to motivate the founding team. And I've seen that happen more than once that the investor says, look, forget it. Your cap table's too messed up. Um, you've given away too much of it. There's not enough common stock left in this deal to keep your founders in, in, in engaged. So you have to be super careful about that. Now, let's go through a couple of other important things. Number one, pre-money or post-money. Number two, the valuation cap, probably the second most important thing about the save. What is the valuation cap? Well, it is the maximum value at which that safe is going to convert into equity, right? So if I have a, you know, if I have a, if I'm an investor and if I have a $1 million safe, I'm a little worried if I say it's just going to convert into preferred stock at whatever your preferred stock price is, because that might be 50, $100 million, and you might only be worth $10 million today. So I might put in that agreement that, look, no matter what, my safe, is going to convert at no higher valuation than, say, 10 million post money or 9 million pre, meaning I'm going to get a certain guaranteed percentage of this company uh, uh, based on to a valuation number that we just agree to today. And almost every safe will have this. The investors, if they're sophisticated, will insist on it, and the market is efficient enough where everybody asks for it. And we typically include that. And keep in mind, I tell people, don't think of the valuation cap as valuation. People get so emotionally attached to valuation. That's not it at all. It's just a governor, right? It's just to keep a runaway valuation from happening because everybody has been through this at least once. And if you're lucky, you've been through it only once and then you learned your lesson is you put money in at a low value and the company uses your money to jack the price with a valuation way high, you know, to build lots of users. And now all of a sudden they've used your money against you because your money's gonna convert at that higher valuation. So we have a valuation cap. You'll see it in almost every safe. The third thing is the discount. This is way less important than people think it is, but the idea is you wanna reward the investor for getting in early. Right, you want to. You know, they saw the future. They put the first money in. They took the big risk. So typically, you know, typically it's around twenty percent. You know, it can vary depending on the deal and on the market. But since I've been seeing safes, I've been seeing twenty percent, meaning that they're going to get their price, their stock at at eighty percent of what it cost the outside investors. So your hundred thousand dollars, your eighty thousand, your hundred thousand dollars is. Your hundred thousand dollars worth of stock is going to cost you eighty thousand dollars of debt or of safe that converts. Let me put it that way. So um, that's the discount. I say it's way less significant than people think because if you do the math, it usually doesn't end up being a big number. The valuation cap can be a big number. A um, couple of other things to keep in mind is the conversion feature. One, does it convert? Uh, it's going to convert automatically when you do a financing uh, or when you sell the company, typically, and it'll convert into common stock when you sell or to get paid a multiple of what uh, they put into the company. But these days, I don't see the multiple that often. I see it converting into common at the valuation cap. Uh, I see most often. It's just easier. Um, <clears throat> It uh, these things are not prepayable. Watch out every once in a while. Uh, if you know if you're an investor, someone will try to sneak some sort of clause in on you. And then there's an optional conversion. There comes a point where the safe holder might say, "Look, at some point you got to give me stock. I can't sit out here not knowing what I've got." That's pretty rare too, but it does happen. And that would be if you do a financing that's lower than a certain threshold. And the safe holder might say, "You know what? I'll take the stock at that price rather than wait." Um, it a well-drafted safe will not convert into the preferred that is being sold in the offering that sets the trigger, but into a what we call a shadow preferred, meaning that the liquidation preference is going to be a lot closer or equal to the actual cash that the investors put in. Liquidation preference will not be the purchase price that the the equity investors at Vague is keep in mind, they paid more typically, right? Because there's a discount. And there's a couple other metrics, anti-conversions, so it's an anti-dilution rather, that are tied to that as well. Uh, listen to my podcast on preferred stock if you want to know what anti-dilution means. 
And then um, finally, the MFN Most Favored Nations Clause. One way to really take a lot of the angst out of a lot of these negotiations or take a lot of negotiation out of this is to just ask for an MFN or just offer it. Because keep in mind, the whole point of the safe was to keep having to give so much of your money to these lawyers like me to negotiate long, complex agreements. We want to keep it standard. We want to keep it simple, um, right? The KISS is another form of safe, uh, the keep it simple instrument, a keep it simple, stupid instrument. And also, honestly, uh, I've been doing warrants. Convertible notes do the same thing. And before that, I, I've been doing warrants that accomplish the same thing for 20 years. But the thing is, is all those instruments can be heavily negotiated. So the MFN just means, look, I'm going to take these terms, the investor will say, but you company, if you sell additional safes, you have to give me the option to elect in the most terms. Because if you get a better, you know, a lower valuation cap or a bigger discount or, or whatever else, uh, I want to get the better of the terms. I want to get the better of their deal or my deal. Okay, that's it. High level safes. Roger Royce, Haynes Boone, and the 10,000 Startups Podcast. We'll see you next time.